Greg and John, congratulations, winners of The Amazing Race Season 35. How does it feel to be able to say that out loud officially? Thank you. I've been telling you, it feels icky. It's just been such a secret for so long. It feels like naughty for me to say it, but we won. We won. You can say it. <laughs> Uh, what was it like watching the episode last? I know there was a, a viewing party and then also just the, your whole comeback in the leg too. Yeah, that was probably, we were just saying, probably one of the worst legs that Johnny and I have had in terms of like the mistakes that we made. So watching it back was a little cringy because we, you know, we, we were like, oh my goodness, just the amp is right there. Like, come on people, figure it out here. Um, but it also felt so good to kind of pull it out at the end. Like even though we had a bad leg, um, kind of pulling it out at the end really made us feel like, okay, we can like overcome things, right? Yeah, and it just shows like not giving up. And and when you're down, just thinking about the task at hand and realizing that it's really not over till it's over and giving it your best shot until we finish line. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were, you knew you were in third after uh, the first two tasks in the scramble. Mm -hmm. So what was your mindset at that point? Honestly, it was just, we were kind of hoping for something like the trapeze, right? Like something that we knew that we could maybe do a little bit better than some of the other teams, like something physical. The other ones were, you know, very detail oriented, which, you know, kind of depends on, you know, your mindset coming into it. But something like the trapeze really was able to slow down the other teams and able to kind of catch us back up. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it re we've seen it time and time, time and time 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 again on the amazing race like it's not over till it's over so that was trying to be our mindset mm -hmm. yeah you got through that pretty quickly and then getting to the kayaks um you got there second so you knew you passed rob and Corey at that point mm -hmm. and also the the very important thing is when you're finding directions to these places treating it like any other leg like taking your time writing down the turn by turn there's a there's a hunch to just Jot it down, chicken scratch, and get to driving, but you still need to go through the kilometers that it takes, or miles at this point, yeah, the miles it takes to get there uh, so that you don't make any wrong turns along the way. So so no navigation troubles? No navigation troubles, although some navigation worries. Like, on our way to the kayaks, it's, it's up there. and You're not in Seattle. It feels like you are in, like, the suburbs. And so we were driving in the dark. We passed what our odometer tells us we should turn. And we're just like, all right, we're, we're looking for some boats, looking for some planes. That we, and I don't even know how we found it. Yeah, I feel like the finales are usually in, you know, some big city and it's in like Times Square in New York. And you're like, okay, I know where that is. This was, I've never seen anywhere more remote than this, especially the actual finish line. It was like in some random park in the back of back of Seattle. But, you know, so it was, it was tough to find, but we found it. Mm -hmm. Well, John, do you have a photographic memory? I absolutely do not have a photographic memory. If anything, my uh, my like auditory memory is pretty good. And so um, I think just like studying up, taking notes like any good racer should do is what really helped us in the in the challenge there. And we really thought we this was going to be iterative. We were ready to to get it wrong a few times, but um, you could see it like in our faces. We're jumping for joy, literally, when he says you're good on the first try. Uh how quickly did you guys get through that? Because it I, the edit made it seem like it was really fast and you weren't even second guessing anything, really. Yeah, I mean, we had some second guesses. Um, I mean, honestly, the hardest part was, I don't I really, I got to watch it back. Obviously, we didn't get to watch it as intensely at the watching party. But the hardest part was um, the pictures. There were pictures on the paddles that we had to match up with the legs. So the picture of, was of the pit stop and we had, had to match it up from with what leg that picture correlated with. And that part was so difficult because you can write down, you know, as many things as you want, but it's hard to draw and keep a mental picture in your head. So, yeah, I mean, it felt like I don't know, 20 minutes, it, the race, you, your heart's pumping so much it's that pumping. You, you don't even know how long it takes. And then you can see Joel and Garrett getting checks and just waiting to see what the fate would be. And every time, you know, the judge would walk away, we're like, okay, we got, we got, Five more minutes, at least, at least. So um, it's a physical challenge too. So the, the endurance part was challenging to say the least. Mm -hmm. But then you, you got to run the first try. I don't know, in the first try. Thankfully. Thankfully. No notes. <laughs> um, would you say maybe your Achilles heels are glass blowing and flipping AM covers? <laughs> well, I think from a higher level, like anything where there's a demonstration and you need to follow it, we rushed too much. We didn't we didn't study up and look at the demonstration enough. And this happened with the rice paper in Vietnam as well. So um, our demonstrator was trying to be a homie to 
say, hey, I'll show you this again. But we absolutely rejected it and just thought that we could figure it out ourselves. Listen to the experts. That's that's what we learned. They're, trying, the they're there to help you. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, like you said, you guys, we, the, uh, you know, amazing edit. They showed you guys flipping the, the AM cover over multiple times and you just completely missing it. Um, and even after you guys realized that Rob and Corey found it too. So yeah, like why did you even feel it? Your fingers touching it when you were turning it over? It was just like <laughs> so in the moment you just didn't notice anything. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't feel anything. I, I think like it's it's actually a pretty cool mechanism like design wise if it was like an ad it said oh you can just store it flipping that that makes a lot of sense but um it, it just seems like a cover otherwise i think the tough part was that there were so many pieces to that entire set that we thought okay well maybe we missed a piece outside because we needed to bring in the pieces from outside inside and so we we're like okay well maybe we missed a piece outside or maybe it's behind the stage like we just didn't know where in the entire piece set it, it could have been um, but yeah, that, that was the toughest one to watch. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they knew with that challenge, like, oh, we're going to get some good comedic content uh, from someone. I mean, all three teams missed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was the first time where I almost felt like dead in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Where we were like, like, especially when we searched everywhere, there was at some point where we were like, okay, what do we, what do, we do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Glass blowing again, again, again. This one, it's like, like I'm yeah. stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys also accidentally helped rob and corey realized that they needed to plug in their amps did you realize in that moment you accidentally helped them i thought it made sense for everything to have power like right. yeah you know <laughs> you don't have to be an engineer for that but uh i think part of it too was okay maybe i i kept my eyes on them and was like all right maybe if they discover it we can we can hop on because you're stuck like you're out of options and mm -hmm. it just happened to be when we stepped out that that they struck the gold um was kicking myself for that in the moment for sure <laughs> I, I do like the the kind of camaraderie all of the teams had like you it, it was like good sportsmanship like you were helpful but not too helpful like you still understood like you know we're at the business end now so I can't actually tell you what this thing mm -hmm. is where to find it so was yeah. that just kind of like unspoken between everyone yeah definitely and everyone respected it too nobody was going to get mad that you didn't help them right it's like we all know we're racing for a, mi a million. I come on, we're not. Yeah. We're not going to take it personally at that point. And this started in earlier legs too. Like go back to Sweden where Joel and Garrett found the clue, and we're like, "Hey!" And you ran past me. I, I was like, "Fair, <laughs> fair enough." I hear you. Well, also, um, it was in Sweden. Yeah, like you guys chose serve the the Nobel Prize dinner, mm -hmm. and you like you guys killed it because you knew French. And it was, I feel like you guys have these like random skills that just like come up and yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, really someone had read it. and, and you guys were also like the only team to do that one too. Yeah. So how much, uh, like, I know like the clue doesn't tell you everything. So like how much of, of like the challenge did you know of being in French and like, you know, the years and everything? We didn't know anything about the the French coming into it. We didn't know about the years coming into it. We just knew that we needed to like serve. Uh, but we had seen a similar challenge to this in China a few legs ago. So we kind of had a general idea of of, of the process. Um, but yeah, we didn't know it was in French, which was really exciting just because I speak French and, and Johnny, you know, like I said, has a great memory. So at that point, it was just a matter of like communicating and the fact that we didn't have any language bearer for the communication. I mean, we were just cooking with gas at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Sure. Um, was there anything on the show that uh, we didn't see that you wish had aired? I feel like so much. Like every episode has content and any racer will tell you like things that they're waiting for them to show and then the part comes up and they completely skip it. For me, I would say we got deeply lost in Germany. Deeply. There was a literal detour on the road on to Kaub and we ended up driving through the forest, no directions. All we had was like, a vague village name for us to to reference, and um, we were just driving blind. It was it was one of the scariest parts of the race, uh, but we, for some stupid reason, kept driving. I like kept, we well because we couldn't turn around. It was like in around. the deep woods of Germany, yeah. and we were like, okay, we should probably turn around. But it was like just a one way highway throughout this hill, mm -hmm. and we were like, oh my goodness, we are so far. Behind. But everybody got stopped pretty much on this detour, and um, yeah, it's, and again, the race just snip snips, just showed us on the ferry getting our our witten and cut it out but i feel like a lot of teams get lost and we, we don't see a, a lot of that the, yeah. those uh, real detours that you take <laughs> so. yeah yeah, yeah.
Uh, well, Greg and John, congratulations again. Um, so much fun watching you guys. And yeah, it was so a blast. And maybe we'll see you guys back one day. All stars, winners season. Anytime. Yeah, one Anytime. Of the best teams, My so. phone's right here. Just call me. <laughs>